Hello, I'm John Durrant, and in this video I want to talk about driving the 28BJY48 stepper motor with a ULN 2003 driver from the Raspberry Pi Pico. I've played with stepper motors a bit on projects using the larger NEMA 17 bipolar variety. I'm planning on a rather smaller project and so picked up some of these 28BJY48 stepper motors. I'll probably convert them to bipolar, but thought I would experiment with the driver that came with them first. So the goal of this video are to share a little bit about the 28BYJ48 and its ULN 2003 driver. Then to connect this up to a Pico and drive it from some basic C or C++. As we see, we need to constantly be doing things to keep the motor moving. We therefore need to think about a concurrent operating system, and I'll show how I do this in FreeRTOS. Let's get started with the basics. The 28BYJ48 is a stepper motor with a geared output. It's unipolar and often comes with a ULN 2003 driver board. I'm going to take a couple of minutes to explain what these terms mean. Feel free to skip ahead. With a DC motor, we just apply current and the motor rotates, but we don't know how fast it's rotating or how far around the rotation the pointer is reached. There are ways to measure this on DC motors, but that isn't what we're talking about here. I want to make the difference between a DC motor and a stepper motor clear. Stepper motors move in steps, so we can count how far we have moved the motor as we are asking it to make each step. We can choose how fast the steps are executed to control the motor's speed. The motor needs more than just two power wires, and therefore we have a driver module to control the stepper motor, then our microcontroller to provide the rotation instructions. Stepper motors draw current all the time and can hold at a position against a force, though the stepper motor in the example is geared and due to the friction on the gears, this isn't something you will notice. The stepper motor has 32 steps in a full rotation, though it's driving a gearbox with a 64 to 1 ratio. That means there are actually 2048 full steps for us to see the spindle travel 360 degrees. The motor is driven by four coils. Each coil is connected to a single wire. There's also a common 5 volt wire to each coil, hence the five wires going to the motor. The motor is unipolar in the coils are driven to become a magnet pole and we can't reverse the current to switch the pole the coil is creating. If we drive the coil in a sequence, we cause the spindle to rotate. The full step sequence to clockwise rotation is this. I'm not going to drop to the physics of why, but just trust the spec for this device. The stepper motor shipped with the ULN 2003 driver board. This is based on the ULN 2003 Darlington transistor array by Texas Instruments. Basically, these adjusting allow us to switch large loads on and off. The coil needs much more current than our Pico could provide and produces a rather nasty back EMF pulse on disconnection of the current. So this chip is going to take that load. The ULN 2003 and our stepper motor can be driven at five volts. The driver board has four control inputs for the four coils and the LEDs to monitor the state of these. It then has a connector for the five wires for the motor. Let's connect the stepper motor up to our Pico. This is going to be a really simple example. I'm just going to make the motor rotate clockwise. I'm going to power my Pico from the USB cable. I'm going to put an LED on GPIO 0 of our Pico to flash in a later example. The ULN 2003 is going to connect to GPIO 2 to 5. 2 will be the first coil. The ULN 2003 will be connected to 5 volts, which I'm going to tap off of the bus. This is the 5 volts from the USB cable. The motor is connected to the output of the ULN 2003. On the breadboard, this looks a bit of a mess. Really, we're just applying 5 volts and ground to the driver board, 
then connecting ULN 2003 inputs 1 to GPIO 2, inputs 2 to GPIO 3, etc. The code for the examples on the video is on GitHub. I will put the URL into the comments. The example will be in the folder 28BYJ48. To build the example, create a folder called build, and in that folder, issue the commands cmake dot dot and then make. The binary file can be copied to the Pico using the boot select or SWD approaches. The code for this example is quite simple. First of all, we set up our array of the GPIO pads we are using for the motor driver. We then initialize each of these as outputs. We define the coil sequence in an array. We use a bitwise mask approach where coil 1 is the unit bit, coil 2 is the second bit, etc. We can now loop through the sequence to turn the motor. We decode the mask of each step in the sequence and then set the GPIO pad value. Once the pads are set, we need to wait a bit for the motor to actually turn. In my test of 5 volts, this needs to be at least 2 microseconds. Running this on the Pico will actually a Pico W in my video here, the stepper motor smoothly turns. The problem with my previous approach is how we get our code to do anything else at the same time. Of course, we could code some cooperative multitasking approach. I have some examples of doing this to drive animations on the LED ring. It's hard work though. We could use a preemptive multitasking real time operating system to help us. Hence, let's use FreeRTOS. I write an active agent which is going to control our motor. Under the hood, this will run a FreeRTOS task and use a queue for taking instructions on movement. Our main program will now require that the motor goes through a set of precise moves with delays in between. We'll also flash an LED on GPIO0 using another active agent class. Our circuit schematic is just the same as the last example. So is our messy breadboard. The code for this example is in the folder freeRTOS 28 bjt 48 This will use the same build process. I'm going to build three components for this example. Blink agent will be an active task to flash the LED. If you've seen my FreeRTOS course on Udemy, then I am explaining the full details on how this works within that course. The stepper class will also be an active task and will manage the stepper motor. Finally, main will boot up FreeRTOS and then go through a set of instructions for the motor to rotate clockwise, then counterclockwise. Let's look at the stepper class. This is heriting from my agent class, which will handle the construction of the task. I just need to provide a run task of what to do within the task. The constructor takes the GPIO pad numbers we are using to connect the motor. To make the motor turn, the client will use the function step, which takes the number of steps to rotate. Positive is clockwise, negative is counterclockwise. Also, the speed of rotation in revolutions per minute up to about 14 for this motor. Under the hood, the step function just places the request into a queue, which will then be picked up by the run function. There are a few private helper functions to find too. In it, to initialize the QPIO pad, process queue to take the items off the queue and set a target position, direction and speed. Mod pause, which does the modular position calculation so that we know where we are in our rotation, and set delay, which converts the RPM speed to microseconds to wait after each of the four steps of our cycle. So our, our step task uses a really common pattern to build out a request structure and place it in a queue. I use this all the time to interface with active objects in my projects. Process queue is then responsible for removing it from the queue. If there is an item in the queue, then it sets the target position for the motor to move to, the direction it is to move in, and the delay between steps. So a run loop simply has to check the queue. It only does this when it's in the target position. If we are not at the target position, then we simply do a step. 
And finally, we sleep until the motor has a chance to move. The step process itself is a small enhancement on our first example. Instead of just counting to four, we are now calculating our position in 360 degrees of rotation in terms of steps. So zero to 2047 with a bit of mass so that we can use this to give us the sequence step and then set the GPIO pad as we did before. Our main program is doing the work of starting FreeRTOS, which I'm not showing here. Constructing the step motor object and starting this as an agent. Then instructing it to move at different speeds and different directions, each time moving an eighth of the rotation. So here we can see the motor turning an eighth at a time. This does open a bunch of questions for me though. How well is this really working? I want to build a demo test rig to see if the code is really working properly. I want to solve some problems though. So I want to know a starting position for the motor or preferably move it to the start position each time. I want to then see it move against some sort of scale to see if it looks accurate. It isn't going to be perfect. These motors do miss the odd step. So let's build a demo and some infrastructure to make this all work. I'm going to use some additional components. Firstly, an optical slot detector. I'll use this to spot a slot at the start position of the ring I am putting on the motor. So I will use this to tell when the motor reaches the start position as a signal will go high. I will use an LED ring underneath the slotted ring. I'm going to illuminate the start and stop and route for the ring to turn, though as a guide, so I can see if the motor is doing what I instructed it to do. So extending our schematic with these two additional components. The slot detector is a 3.3 volt device and attached to GPIO1. It will go high on detecting our slot. The LED ring is a digital controlled WS2812B LEDs, and we can connect them to GPIO6. They are technically 5 volt devices, but as only 12 of them, using them at low brightness, I can get away with 3.3 volts. So I need a few 3D parts for the build, a table to attach my motor to, the slot disc to register the starting position. This also has a hole to see through to the LED ring and a mounting place for the slot detector. This is a good point to mention my sponsor for the video. So thank you to PCBWay.com for helping me out. PCBWay.com are your go-to solution for PCB manufacturing, 3D printing, CNC, sheet metal fabrication, and injection molding. All your maker needs. So I've added my 3D parts on top of the breadboard. We have our stepper motor now driving the disc. We are still using an ULN 2003 driver board. You can see the slot in the disc that we're going to detect. The detector is set on its side at the bottom of the little table. The disc also has a little register hole through which we can see the LED ring. The idea is to be able to locate the disc directly above the target LED. So the first thing the device will do when we start it up is calibrate. It will show this by setting the LEDs to all blue, except for the home position LED, which will be green. We'll then use the slot detector to locate the home LED. Then we start giving our motor random target LEDs to move to around the ring. Each time we'll set the start position as a red LED, the target position as a green LED, and the route to get there we will set as yellow. Then we can watch the motor hopefully move from start to target. The demo will pause for one second between each movement. I've included the code for this example in the project folder demo 28 BJT 48, but I'm not going to walk through it here. At the start, the LEDs are all blue except for the home, which is green. The motor will then move until we find the home position. 
Then we'll start setting a target journey for our motor, moving from red to green each time through the yellow LEDs. You can see things are not 100% accurate. We drift a little. Each time the slot goes back through the slot detector, we're recalibrating zero position though, so it keeps it fairly accurate. We've tested out our 28BYJ48 stepper motor with a ULN 2003 driver connected to the Pico. I have hopefully shown a realistic approach to driving this using free autos. Please like and subscribe for more videos like this. If you want to know more about the techniques I've used in the video, then check out my courses on Udemy. I show how to compile and deploy code to the Pico in the introduction course, how to use the WS2812B LED ring in the microprojects course, how to run FreeRTOS on the Pico within the FreeRTOS course, and how to use MQTT as an IoT device for the Pico W in my IoT course. I'll put links in the comments below. Until next time, thank you for watching.